Welcome to Shotgun Sports USA. Powered by Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. If your thing is clay target sports, you're in the right place. Listen to the best shotgun shooters from all over the world in every discipline. Championship winning coaches, gun clubs, target setters, vendors, as well as companies that make it all happen. Check us out online at ShotgunSportsUSA.com. Like us on Facebook and follow on Instagram. Shotgun Sports USA is also driven by Beretta. Beretta, the number one choice of champions. Also brought to you by Rick Hemingway's ProMatic Trap Sales, Cole Gunsmithing, Clay Target Vision, Castellana USA and Ultimate Shooting Accessories, Sound Gear, Clay Shooter Supply, and Falcon Strike. We are back after a while off, which I'm still trying to get caught up with things between life and work, podcast and kids and everything else. It seems like all of my time is gone, but that's okay. The good thing is that I have episodes recorded. I just have to get them released so you can hear them. I think I'm going to start trying to release episodes now on Fridays instead of Wednesdays and hope to have some good stuff so that you'll want to listen to. Next thing, we have picked up a new sponsor and this company is Falcon Strike. If you have not heard of them, they are a recoil management company. Some shooters struggle with effects of recoil. So they've created a hydraulic recoil pad that uses technology from the aerospace industry. This technology dramatically reduces recoils to give those shooters better accuracy. They flinch less and they have more endurance. The recoil system will fit wood and synthetic stocks and you don't need a gunsmith to put it on. You can do it yourself. So if recoil bothers you, I'm telling you now, there is an inexpensive solution that works. I have one, and the difference is definitely noticeable. Go check them out, falconstrikeusa.com. My guest on the show this week is definitely an interesting guy. He has been around this sport for a long time, and he's seen it evolve into what it is today. Something else that's very interesting about him is what he does for a living. We're going to cover all of that right now. Please welcome Tom John to the show. You know, I met you at the North Central Regional, and we had a great time shooting, and I got to know you a little bit. I've seen your name everywhere, Facebook, you know, on on the score, on the tournament rosters, and I wanted to get you on here and find out a little bit more about you. They might love me or hate me. I don't know. We'll find out. You know, when when we walked up to the station, we shot super sporting together. And I, I had never met you. And we got a show pair at the Targets. And what you said made me laugh when we first saw him. And I know you don't remember that. But I thought this guy's going to be good to shoot with right here. So there's all kind of stuff came out your mouth. <laughs> I think I said something along the line, who pissed the target center off? <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> I thought, wow. So you had a good time as a whole at the regional? Absolutely. Did you shoot like you were, like you expected to or like you wanted to, or did you not do either one? Uh, in the feet pass, I shot okay. Um, in the super sporting, I felt that, I missed some stuff I shouldn't have missed, but, you know, yeah. uh, in the main, I didn't shoot very good at all. Your wife shot with us, and I don't know. I bet you can't beat her. She can, she can show get it. I'm telling you. She's getting the game. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you know what? She's She's come a long way. She doesn't get to shoot, you know, a lot like other people, and, you know, she carries a – a full-time job and gets to shoot once a week if she's lucky but you know she's shooting well and you know everything's starting to come together for her yeah she uh she really impressed me and she's always got a good attitude you You know know, she's got a good attitude and she tries hard yeah well that's what matters you know they always says if you got a good attitude and try hard you're gonna do well i mean that's my problem 
don't know. So. No, she does. She she has a good attitude about it, you know. I mean, uh, you know, she's she's got uh, got the gift of determination on her side, and you know what? She's determined that she's gonna shoot well, and you know, that's half the battle right there. Oh yeah, that's right. Where are you? From? Where where are you two from? We live in Porter Ranch, California. That's 20 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. We live up in a place called the San Fernando Valley. So how did you get into Clay's? I know you've been in it for a long time, but how did you get into it? I started shooting at 22 with my dad, you know, when he'd go to the range and sight his big game rifles in. And he had a friend that was Marilyn Monroe's first husband. Nice. Or first, uh, yeah, Marilyn Monroe's first husband, and uh, he was a police officer that was married to Marilyn. And uh, he was the LAPD range master. And when I'd get out of school, he reloaded all the ammunition for the L.A. Academy where they trained all the police officers to shoot. So I'd go box the ammunition for him. And uh, he started taking me out on the weekends on Sunday and, you know, he's, he had an old handset that he'd throw clay targets and that's where it all started. When was that? What year was that? You know? Oh God. Uh, like 28 or something like that. <laughs> Be nice. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> I'm getting there, but not quite. Uh, that was probably right around 1966. You know what? I've always, you know, shooting's been my passion my whole life. I, it doesn't matter what it is, rifles, pistols, shotguns, you know, bench press, hunting. Uh, I do it all, and I, I really enjoy it, and it's something I've stayed with my whole life. How did you get good back then? Like, what was the, what was the route? I mean, do you take lessons? And, and was there people that could show you just you to figure it out yourself i mean i've never had a lesson in my life um you know i just started out shooting duck hunting with my dad and his friends and you know um uh, you know and i just i started you know figuring stuff out on my own and you know um uh, when i was 12 or 13 years old i started my dad would take me to a trap shoot once in a while and, or, you know, a pot shoot. Mm -hmm. And back in those days, it, you know, there wasn't many kids shooting and you had to stand there and shoot with the grown ups. So, uh, it was a pretty tough crowd. You either shot good or got run out of, out of the place really quick. You know, we've talked about this topic. I'm kind of, we're kind of talking about what happened in the, you know, how you got into this and, and all of that. We've talked about this topic several times on the show, but it's always neat to hear the ways that the sport has changed from back when it started until now. So what differences stand out in your mind on how, how it's changed over the years? Oh God, that conversation could go on all night. Um, you know what, when I first started, um, Everything was basically uh, handsets, and you know, uh, most of the places threw a lot of true pairs, and you know, it was relatively close targets, and you know, real short windows, and you know, it, it you know, a twenty-eight inch gun was the gun of choice back then. You know, some mm -hmm. guys had thirties, but you know, it was uh, it was more like skeet in the woods back then, just shooting a little gun. That's all. What what how how about the the uh, the amount of people at, at tournaments and the, I mean stuff like that. How, how different is it now than it was back then? I know there's oh. more people, but you know, back in the early days of sporting players, you know, if there was at the local tournaments, if you've seen you know, 15 or 20 people, that was a pretty big crowd. You know, everybody was shooting trap and skeet back then and either that or they were pot shooting. And 
you know, sporting plays back then was kind of looked at like kind of a joke. All the trap shooters were laughing at it, saying, ah, that's never going to last. It's a fad. <laughs> Boy, how wrong they were. I'm telling you, it's getting bigger and bigger every year. You know, um, it's just, it's, it's crazy, to, especially with the youth, you know, the amount of people coming into the sports is crazy. What are the differences that you've seen shooting in California back then until now? Ever since they started um, getting away from the handsets and started going to, back then, you know, duomatic machines uh, were pretty uh, pretty common on some of the ranges. And then they went to universal machines. And they quite a few of the places had universal. And then there was a, a man up north by the name of Dave Feline that built traps in his garage. And a lot of the Northern clubs had his, uh, automatic traps. And, you know, it, it's taken off from there. And today the machines that they have today are just the targets they throw and the angles they throw them in. If, you know, we never even dreamed of seeing stuff like that years ago. What about gun laws? How, how, how have they changed or have they? You know what? Everybody, you know, is afraid of California because of the gun laws. But it doesn't phase me any. I mean, it's business as usual with me. It just, um, you know, um, they, they keep adding more, more laws, but you know, it doesn't seem like it's affecting anybody here. Yeah, I figure that's how it was. I always talk about the, you know, the bad part of it, but in reality, it's probably not that bad, you know? No, I get hassled at other airports more than I do LAX. LAX is a dream to come in and out of. I mean, they check in, you open the case, they look at it, they put a tag in it, it goes on the airplane, and you're you're on the way. Yeah. Speaking of California, so, speaking of California, I got to ask this. Who is the best shooter to come out of California? Or still in California. <laughs> uh, everybody thinks they're the best shooter here. Uh, to come out of California, without a doubt, Zach. You think you so? Know, Zach, Zach Zach's been a tough competitor since since he was, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. He does it a lot. That's for sure. You know, we 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 really do have some really uh, good shots in California. We always have had. Yeah. I mean, some of them don't compete anymore, you know. A uh, really close friend of mine, John Boyle, was one of, the, one of the really best shots ever on the West Coast, whether it be trap pigeons or sporting clays. He was, he was a great shot. He died a few years ago. But, you know, I mean... Uh, over the years, you've had, uh, you know, Zach, Craig Polly, um, you know, quite a few different shooters that were really top shots. I don't know anybody in California. I've never even been there. I kind of want to go there just to feel the weather, then turn around and leave and come back. You have won zone shoots. You've won state championships, and I'm sure you've won a lot more than that. But now that you're a little older, do you find yourself just as competitive as you used to be? Oh, absolutely. Or more? I don't. I mean, are you more competitive? Uh, a, you know what? That hasn't changed. It's about the same as I used to. You know, the feeling's the same. I, I still like to compete. I still like to, you know, go to shoots, and I have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. As you have gotten older, what's something you've noticed that you started suffering with when you come when it comes to shooting? Is it your eyes? It's your your reflexes. What is it? Is there anything? Can waking think up in the morning. <laughs> waking up in the morning? <laughs> hey, that's a challenge. <laughs> Is it? I guess you can look at it like at least you are, are waking up, you know? You know, your reflexes are still good, at, at least at my age. I'm not feeling like my reflexes are real bad yet. But, yeah. you know, my eyes, uh, after the national, I'm going to uh, go have some work done on my eyes. I have some... Uh, eye issues that I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think 
I think the worst part of getting old is the recoil. Really? If you want to know the, the God's honest truth, you know, the recoil is probably your worst enemy as you start to get some age on you. Is it, is it the, the, um, what about the recoil? Is it like expecting the recoil or the actual recoil itself? Just the recoil over the years and the constant, you know, pounding on your shoulder, I think that really gets to you after, after you get a little bit older and, you know, you start switching shells and, you know, it used to be when I was younger, if I could have stuffed dynamite in a barrel and put shot in front of it, I'd have done it, you know, and yeah. today, uh, it's more like a firecracker. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like, uh, Hey, uh, do you have anything with less powder? <laughs> so that's kind of where you're at when you get up in the age, you know, and then an automatic, you know, it kind of funny over the years. I've never wanted to shoot an automatic and I'm, I'm starting to think that the a 400s are looking pretty awesome right now. Now, what do you shoot? What gun do you shoot? I shoot a DT 11 right now. Nice. What, what ammo are you, what, what's, what's your ammo that you're shooting? I'm shooting RC right, uh, this year and, uh, pretty happy with it. It's, uh, it's really great ammunition and, yeah. um, you know, the recoil's not bad on it at all. Well, oh, you shooting one ounce. I'm shooting all one ounce. I quit shooting ounce and an eighth quite a few years ago. Yeah. Couldn't take the beating anymore. Yeah. If you move to an automatic, it'll, it'll for sure be easy on you. I got a new one sitting in the closet. I just haven't, uh, got the nerve to get it out and stick with it long enough yet. Everything I mentioned a minute ago, the zone shoots and champ state championships and all that. You won all that stuff while you still had a full-time job. From what I can remember yeah. you telling me now, yes. uh, and you didn't travel to many shoots either, uh, but you are now. Why now and not then? Well, back then I, you know, I uh, owned a record service with uh, two locations and had forty nine trucks and uh, worked for the movie studios. I did a lot of studio stuff and. Traveling was just out of the question. I just never could find the time. I mean, I think in all the years I've shot, I managed if when I was working and had my uh, towing company, I think I managed to get to, you know, maybe four nationals in all those years. Wow. And, you know, it was just really difficult. And, now I don't, I don't have the record service anymore. And I got out of it in uh, uh, 2019. So, you know, now I have the time and I'm really enjoying going to the, going to the shoots back. It's something I've never done before. Yeah. You were the captain, the uh, super vet captain for sporting and fee for team USA this year. Yes, I was. And uh, I was talking to Zach and he said that you had never been overseas to shoot until recently. I haven't been out of California to shoot very often. No, I, wow. I never, never got the opportunity to go anywhere other than, you know, years ago, I went to Georgia for a weekend and shot the national fee test championship. I think that was in 1994. And that's about as, uh, that's about the only time I got back east. Well, so what did you think about it going overseas, especially being on Team USA? You know what? That was the most awesome experience I've ever had shooting. Really? It was incredible. And there's no doubt why uh, the Europeans have been such great shots over the year after seeing the type of stuff that they shoot. and. Uh, that was that was an eye opener. What did you think about their targets? You know, their targets uh, they they're not too concerned about the crybabies that we have here in the United States that cry about how hard the targets are. <laughs> um, 
you know what? Their targets, uh, they were pretty awesome, in my opinion. I, I thought it was great. Uh, in England, I thought that that E.J. Churchill is, uh, I've heard about it for many, many, many years, and I finally got to see it. What a place. Yeah. Incredible. Hungary was something uh, pretty spectacular, too, uh, you know, but the only problem with that is, you know what, you, I look at targets over there and go, what do you do with that? Yeah. I mean, they threw stuff I've never seen before, never even dreamed of seeing before, you know? Really? Yeah. I mean, uh, that was, that was, uh, that was something to see. I'll tell you what, uh, I hope that I get the opportunity to go again. Are you, do you coach? Did I hear you tell me you were, you coached any, is that right or wrong? Yeah. yeah I started coaching again. You know, I've I've coached a few here, a few younger shooters here and there over the years, but I've never taken it real serious. And lately, I've been doing uh, taking the coaching pretty serious, and I'm starting to get a pretty big clientele. And you enjoy it now? You know, I really do. Uh, years ago, I didn't like it much. I'd rather be shooting and coaching. Yeah. And uh, now I'm. I'm really enjoying coaching, you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, I got some pretty good, pretty good talent coming along right now. And it's fun to watch and watch them, you know, come up through the, through the classes. What, where, where do you coach at? What gun club do you shoot at most? I've been coaching, uh, at more and more sporting clays a little. I've been coaching a lot at, at LA clays. Yeah. And a lot at Kern Gun Club up in Bakersfield. What do you consider your home club? That would have to be L.A. Clays. How often are you shooting now? I know you still work, but how often do you shoot? You know, I try to get get out once once a week if I can. Yeah. It, but, you know, it depends on, you know, what kind of workload I got, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm going I'm to talk about that a minute. The, you know, when we finished shooting together up at the – regional we sat around i don't know talk for 20 or 30 minutes and i asked you what you did for a living and you may have the coolest job that i've ever heard of and <laughs> what i want you to do is i want you to talk about that for a minute tell everyone what you do and how you got into doing this and then we're going to dig into it a little currently i'm a 399 hollywood teamster and that's for the hollywood all the hollywood studios whether it be universal fox Paramount, Warner Brothers. I work for all the studios, depending on the shows and their needs. When uh, when they call me, um, you know, I'm not stuck usually on a show. I worked a lot of different shows over the years. I did a lot on the Terminator, uh, Gone in sixty seconds. You know, I I did a a lot for the Fast and Furious franchise. And uh, recently I've been working, I worked on a show called Terminalist. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh -uh. Terminalist, it's a good watch. Watch that one. Uh, I had an offer to go on Yellowstone last year for six months and turn it down. I didn't want to go away from home that long. Well, all right. So you're you're talking about all these movies you've been a part of, uh, and people are probably thinking, "Well, hey, I'm about to go watch it to see if I can see him in the movie." But you're not in the movie. You're in the movies, but you're not in the movies, right? No, I do uh, driving work. Enemy of the state. Yeah. Uh, I did a big shot in Enemy of State, driving the big uh, black Peterbilt that was uh, going through the intersection with the ambulance on that. And in Terminator, uh, Terminator 2, they had a big crash uh, where the tow truck went through the bridge and off into the wash. You ever see that? Yeah. That was that was one of the big gags that I did. And they couldn't put a stuntman in that because that was a about a 60-foot drop when it went through the wall into that wash. So what we did is we welded 
<clears throat> we welded the steering and we put about, I think there was about 1800 foot of cable laying out and we put what they call a six part line running through snatch blocks on the street that were, uh, tied down to plates in the street. And we cabled that thing off behind one of my trucks and it went off on the radar gun. They had it at like 65 miles an hour when it hit the, hit the wall and went through the wall down into the, into the wash. You have trucks working for these shows. You're not tearing up your own stuff. You're driving their stuff. And, and, I, what I'm, what I gathered is you, you kind of say, uh, "Gone in sixty seconds in a wreck." You pulled cars through, made it look like they were just tearing up everything, right? Oh no, no! If you watch "Gone in sixty seconds," you'll see the, the big chase scene with the, with the police pursuit where the, the Mustang comes through the garage, mm -hmm. and there it goes nose to nose with the big black Peterbilt coming down the street. Is he's backing up the Peterbilt's right on his nose. That was one of my, if you watch it, that was one of my uh, heavy wreckers, and I was driving that. I know you told me you could see you in a couple, but it wasn't it wasn't for long, right? Usually you can't. They usually don't. It, they don't put. Uh, you don't get to see you in there, right? No, you don't get to see me much. You can see me in Last Boy Scout. Um, none of the Terminators, you know, uh, a lot of the, you know, did you ever see the, uh, the big tanker wreck in Terminator two where Arnold's up on the side of the tanker? I don't, it's been so long since I've seen it. I couldn't tell you if I've seen it or not. I know I've watched the movie, so I'm sure I saw it at one point in my life. <laughs> well, when they had Arnold up on the side of the tanker, the the director told me just don't just don't snap that thing too hard and drop him off in the alley you know because we had him up on the tanker and i was dragging that tanker down the alley behind one of the trucks um you know there's there's a lot goes on behind the scenes and you don't you don't get on camera much so that now that you know kind of what you know with the stunts and what, how it really happens is it fun watching movies anymore Oh yeah, I I always like watching good movies. Can you pick out something that's been staged or not not real, so to speak? Yeah, that's the bad part about it cuz you know what, they when you're filming the movies and you're working them, you know, they they don't film them uh the shots in sequence and then they start cutting and changing everything and you go, "Wow, that was at the end of the movie." But it's up here in the front. You know, they, they cut and splice so much, you can't tell which is which. How long does it take to make one of those movies? Like Terminator. How long are you working out there? I worked on that for about seven months. Wow. And, you know, Fast and Furious 5, I they took me and uh, my truck over to Puerto Rico for two months. And I worked there for two months and then Atlanta, Georgia for a couple months and then on home. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff in the Terminator movies was all done in Atlanta, right around Atlanta, Georgia. There's a lot of stuff that's actually filmed in Georgia. Oh, it's, you know what? That's, that's gotten to be New Mexico and, uh, Atlanta or, or, uh, and parts of Louisiana. They got more more movies going on there than they do here in California. Really? Louisiana? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Georgia, Georgia has got a lot more play than we have here now. Why is that? Do you think? Because they give them the tax breaks. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. and California doesn't give them anything back and they, they take everything, you know, New Mexico, uh, Albuquerque is, is huge. You ought to see the studios they built over in uh, the eastern side of Albuquerque. How did you get into this, Tom? You probably wouldn't remember it. You were probably a kid, a little kid. There was a show on TV called Fall Guy years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah. It was all about stuntmen. Yep, I remember that. Okay, well, that's how I started. You know, they 
they were filming down the street from my record company. And this is when I was first starting in the record service and they were crashing cars and, you know, flipping them over in ravines and, you know, jumping them off of jumps down into the ravine and everything. Well, the guy come walking into my yard and he says, Hey, do you think you'd want to come over here and pull all this stuff out for us? And I said, sure. And that was the start of it. And then it just, you know, snowballed from there. Yeah. Call this guy. He knows how to do it. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, um, you know, it got to the point where, you know, they, anytime, you know, nine out of 10 times, if you've seen a wrecker in a, in a TV show or a movie, it was one of my records. So how many records do you have now? I don't have any records now. All I have now is, um, uh, I showed you that picture of that, uh, big low bed that I have. Yeah. 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 And I still run studio stuff with it. I keep it for moving the oversized loads and, you know, the train cars and subway cars and everything for the studios. So I keep, I just kept that one and I sold off everything else. What, what's the biggest thing you've had to move? Well, have you ever heard the name Brad Sutton? Brad was a top shot in California. He's uh yes, I have good friend. Yes. Good I have. friends with Zach. Zach's been a, a, a good shot. He's in Missouri now. Matter of fact, when we were shooting uh, super sporting, that kid I was talking to that was mm-hmm. the squad in front of us, that's Brad's that's Brad Jr. Oh okay. that's Brad's son. Okay. And uh um you know, I've driven for Brad and Brad moves million pound loads on a weekly basis. I mean he moves million pound transformers. He does all the uh transformers for all the power companies all over the country. So I've, I've driven for him a little, little, and you know, the loads that I move aren't near that kind of weight, but you know, usually, you know, in my stuff, I'm, I'm between 80 and 150,000 pounds is where I usually stay around here. What, what was that? Like, what is the, something we would know? What have you moved? Well, if you see that movie terminal list, you'll see the C-130 that they have, uh, they're doing all the filming in the C-130 fuselage. Mm-hmm. I moved that C-130 fuselage for them. I moved it from um, LAX out to uh, Ontario Airport where they were filming in the hangar out in Ontario Airport. That just sounds like it's a cool job to me. I, I, we talked about it forever the other day when we were shooting, and I'm just, it's just... You know, it's a lot of fun, but they don't ever give you enough notice to get, you know, to get, uh, to where you feel like, uh, you have any kind of sanity at all. Everything's last minute with them, you know? Yeah. Hurry, hurry, and, hurry. You know, they want, you know, they want the impossible done right now, you know? Yeah. Didn't you say you had something to do with, uh, Transformers, the movie? Yeah, if you see uh, in Transformers, you see the uh, where that bus is running down uh, the freeway and blows it up and blows it in half. Mm-hmm. That was that was done behind. I was cabling that truck be or that bus behind me, and there was a stunt man in the bus, but the bus wasn't drivable, so we towed it in the shot, and then at the last minute we put a we put a, a charge on the cable and blew the cable and I come out of the shot and then they blew the, they blew the, uh, bus in half going down the freeway. That and then we did the, uh, in the original, uh, transformers, you see the two diesel rigs hit head on. That was, that was done with cables. And I pulled those together with, uh, with uh, a pulley system with cables. So you're just pulling it, pulling both of those cars head on or whatever it was head on in one yeah. another, just using cables. Yeah. They, well, they were cab over trucks and they couldn't put stuntmen in them because they'd have never survived it with the cab overs. The cab overs are the ones where the driver's sitting right at the front window. Yeah. And they wanted to use cab overs. And so they took the driver, drivers out and 
we decided to cable them together. And, you know, as usual, they they wanted, they figured they could do it with a small truck and they tried and they couldn't get the speed they needed. So then they called me at the last minute and said, how long will it take you to get to San Francisco? You know, so I ended up driving up there and the next morning we, we did the shot. I was, it took us about 45 minutes and we were done. That just sounds like a fun job. It's probably, you probably are tired of it. I don't know. Maybe you're not, but I would just think no, it'd be fun. Believe it or not, I still really enjoy it. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun. Tell me one story before I let you go. Tell me one of your best sporting clay stories. Me and Zach in a shoot off at the 2006 state shoot. That's a standout. What's the story? What happened? You know, I'm so old. I don't remember what happened. Ask Zach. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I hadn't seen Zach in a lot of years. And uh, I quit shooting for 10 years. Mm hmm. And that year I decided to come back to shooting and, uh, me and Zach ended up in a shoot off of all people. Cause Zach's always been one of my favorite people in the game. Yeah. You know, I kind of watched that grow up in the game and he's always been, he's always been great. They don't get any better than that. You know, Zach, uh, you know what uh, I knew when he was, you know, 12 years old. I'll never forget me and his dad were talking one day and he, he asked me, he says, Hey, how do you think he's doing? And I said, that kid's going to be great one day. You watch. Mm -hmm. Sure enough. I was right. I told him when we were in England, I said, you know, a lot of people say you got it made, Zach. I wouldn't have your job for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Not a chance. Yeah. I said, you, you, I, I told him, I said, you know what? That's a rough deal what you're doing. I mean, I'm doing it for fun and I'm wore out. And I don't, you know, and I only go out of town, you know, three, four times a year. And I don't want to do it any more than that. Now, are you going to nationals? Oh, yeah. What What are you doing next? I just got back from Montana. I, I went up and seen Mike Leupold and had him do some work on my stock for me and Got to see a field trial dog that I got running in Montana right now. Oh, yeah. So I forgot about that. I'm going to go to nationals, and then I'm going to start uh, figuring out how to get my dog off the truck so I can go hunting with him. That dog you're talking about, yeah, I'd want to go hunt with him. My. He's pretty awesome. He just, you know, he's qualified all age, and he's getting ready to start running the opens. He's quite a dog. He's a powerhouse. Yeah. He's a lot of fun. What do you do, uh, Tom, in your, in your free time? Say you're not shooting and you're not working. What do you like to do? You know, if I got my dog at home, um, uh, I love to train with my dog and, you know, I, I've been running field trial dogs since I was a kid and I really enjoy the field trial dogs. And, yeah. But right now he's in Montana, so I'm finding things to keep me occupied, like giving lessons and trying to make some money. Well, man, it's, uh, you're just an interesting guy to me. I don't, I, you know, I don't know why, but I just kind of thought this guy's interesting right here. So the, your, your history in the sport and, and what you do for a living and what you did for a living, as far as having the, I, I think you told me it was one of the largest records services on the whole West coast. It wasn't like it was just a few tow trucks, you know? So no, uh, when, when I was, uh, when I had, uh, I had 49 at one time and big records, uh, big tow trucks. Well, I had a, a mix of big and small. Okay. I, I had, I did the Beverly Hills police towing and I had seven divisions for the California highway patrol. And we had 18 heavy wreckers. And I had nine low beds running, moving, moving, uh, excavators and dozers. And it was a, it was a full service company. And that was, that was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. No, I, uh, I really enjoy it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's been, uh, 
been a lot of fun traveling. Like I say, I've never, never got to do much of it. Now that I'm doing it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy going to places like Northbrook. That place is amazing. The, just everything up there is very nice. You know. Yeah, no, he puts on a, he puts on a great shoot. I've been there a couple times now and can't wait to go back. I appreciate you coming on and look forward to seeing you again. And, and maybe you get on team USA this year and you'll get to travel somewhere else. Uh, won't be for the lack of trying. <laughs> yeah. You can try to get on team USA. I'm sure you won't have a problem with that. But, uh, like I said, I appreciate you coming on and, and spending some time with me and talking about yourself and, and, uh, I'll see you somewhere. I know. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit us online at shotgunsportsusa.com. Check out the products that our sponsors have to offer, and we'll see you on the next one.